Om Swastiastu. Hello, my name is Madriku Sadaiwe Rawal and hello everyone, uh, smart people, I hope your day is running well. So, I'm today I'm from the third group, will present of the subject of teaching English as a foreign language. Now, I'm from the third group, as the first presentation we will I will discuss or present about the syllabus design and instructional process. Okay, before I start, before I get inside more about the syllabus design and instructional process, have, I have one question for all of you here. Have you ever heard about the instructional process and syllabus design? And what is that? What is the difference and what is the definition of all those things? So, I will explain it briefly to you. The first one is about the instructional process. Instructional process in Indonesia, we can say, is the process belajar mengajar. So, in instructional process, we, we, teach, such, we teach the student how to understand something. We, like, for example, if we teach them about the grammar, they... Yeah, interaction of the teacher and the student during the class time, the stu uh, the student understand and catch the meaning, catch the point of the what the teacher is said is teaching is explaining to them, and yeah, is just the bottom line is between interaction with the student and the teacher. So that is the instructional process. For the syllabus design, it's like a class contract. We get the syllabus design in the beginning from the class. Like, for example, like a lecturer or the teacher will give you a list of the material. For example, like if the one semester you will get a 16 meeting. So 16 meeting and in 16 meeting, in each meeting, from the first meeting until the last meeting, each meeting there, it has a different material. Maybe the first meeting you will learn about the nouns, and the second meeting you will learn about the pronouns. But yeah, it's uh, really different. It's it's meeting from the first meeting until the last meeting. So that's the syllabus we will give this signs this list by the teacher and then the teacher will explain what is the point what we why we should do learn all of this so that is the syllabus design and instructional process i hope uh those explanation is get it and we move to the process of the instructional process itself and the syllabus design and uh, add more information in the syllabus design. I will add more information about the curriculum. So we'll not just explain about the instructional process, the syllabus design, but also, but the curriculum as as well. Now we will get to the syllabus design and instructional process. Now I've prepared the syllabus and the instructional process, the slide number two of my PowerPoint. So I will explain its its part one by one. So the curriculum, so I will explain as my explanation before, I will add some information of the syllabus design and instructional process. It's the curriculum. Curriculum and the syllabus design itself are two major documents necessarily prepared by the teacher in the course design task. So, the curriculum is the large or large uh, and general role, general role, role by where the instructional process is takes place. So, the curriculum itself is more like the rule of why the teacher should, should be to learn or teach, some, teach the student. For example, like uh, in the situation, the, the curriculum in the situation is really different. The student must be active in, and be more active than their 
teacher. So the student must be find another information, not just from the school, not just from the university and library and for the their tutor itself. The student must be active, find the information in whatever sources as long they find it. So that's the the explanation of the curriculum. It's more general like of the syllabus design and instructional process but we get but we get this curriculum in the end of the instructional process not in the beginning of the instructional process it's different in it's different from the syllabus design syllabus design is something something document is prepared by the teacher itself so for example it have if the one semester we a uh, student will get a 16 meeting in its meeting the student must prepare a mat 16 material in its meeting so the first week or the first meeting the uh, the teacher must learn uh, must teach about the nouns or pronouns or maybe the models maybe for the second meeting it has it must be different but still but must still have a connection each other for example like it's a basic grammar it's a basic grammar we must learn from the basic of the grammar itself so the first one we must learn about the pronouns nouns adjective verb and extra until the from the basic until the complex so that's the syllabus design the explanation of the syllabus design and also the curriculum as well and for the last is curriculum is the instructional process in instructional process is the process we do with the teacher and the student do about the material for example like the first meeting the, the teachers did about the models and the student if the student have any question or if the student have any something they need to ask and want to answer the question of the teacher himself or herself that's the process of the interaction between the teacher and the student and it's called instructional process or also known as the instructional process in the during the class but and that's all about the process definition and the different as well of the instructional process uh, syllabus design and then the curriculum the more information about the curriculum so i hope uh, this section is clear for you and i'll just add more information about in bahasa uh, so this is the point Curriculum, curriculum sama syllabus design itu perbedaannya hanya curriculum itu adalah suatu papan yang besar yang di, diberikan oleh uh, sekolah atau dari peraturan sekolah yang yang berisikan peraturan bagaimana cara cara teacher cara para guru itu mengajar murid-muridnya. Karena setiap kurikulum berbeda setiap tahunnya, berbeda setiap karena itu bisa berganti berganti ganti. Jadi this, uh, the teacher must be look at the curriculum first, and then they can make a make a syllabus design, and they can put also uh, how they teach. If the curriculum say the student must be more active than the student, uh, the, the teacher, the student, uh, the teacher must set the instructional process, uh, which make the student become more active than the teacher. So, that's the explanation. Uh, I'm sorry if I mix my my language, not just pure Indonesia, but also in English as well. So that's the point.
I hope you get it. Now we move to the sixth type of the of the syllabus. There are six type of syllabus that the teacher need consider when give to their student. Okay, now we move to the sixth type of the syllabus. So as you can see the PowerPoint here, I prepare the six kind of the syllabus that the teacher is usually used in the instructional process. The first instruction, uh, the first syllabus is a, uh, is uh, the structural or, or we can say a formal syllabus. The second is notional or the functional of syllabus, and the third is situational syllabus, and the fourth is skill based syllabus, and the uh, Fifth is the task-based syllabus, and the last is content-based syllabus. So I will explain briefly each syllabus, what is the point, what is the outline of each syllabus. So the first one is the formal syllabus. Uh, it, it more like the, the structural, the structural syllabus. Uh, in but in grammatical structure so what is the grammatical structure what grammat grammatical structure itself it calls like uh, the the material material of grammar in language teaching for example like you teach about the uh, nouns uh, verbs, adjective, adverb, and etc. And for the notional function, it has a connection with the formal syllabus. Uh, why? Because in the formal syllabus, we learn about the introduction of the material in the syllabus itself. But in the functional or notional function, uh, notional syllabus, we learn about the the function why we should learn about the material in that syllabus for example like verbs or adjective uh, in adjective we can use adjective when we inform something agree something or so forth so many expression that we can use uh, with wait, we can use with adjective and for the situational process, situational syllabus is more like the how the student imaginary like imagine like they uh, practice practice the material, but in the imaginary imaginary um, situation like not a real situation. In the real situation, we will learn about in the task base of the the task base of syllabus uh, no i'm sorry the skill based syllabus the skill based syllabus we will learn about the how the student take a role take a main role of the of the situation how they take, for example like learn about the how discuss in the hotel so this, uh, the teacher will set the or student itself set the situation make the in the real situation in the hotel and discuss with the receptionist how the uh, make appointment and extra there's so many things and the fifth point of the syllabus is about the task task based task based syllabus the task based syllabus it in here syllabus it taught the student to the stu uh, the student will the teacher will give a test give a task to the student how much they increase the development during the first meeting until the last meeting so that's the outline of the uh, task-based syllabus and the content 
content based syllabus it more like the how the content the student give a uh, the, uh, the teacher giving the student how choose the content based they what the best they like the best content information they like for example like if they like to learn the linguistic they must find the content the information content of the linguistic and they must like to learn that because the teacher let them to find the content themselves and learn it by themselves and they must like the content itself so i think that's all the explanation for all about the syllabus design and the instructional process and more information about the six type of the syllabus design and instructional process and for the curriculum as well so i think that's all from me from the first speaker of the third group and i close my presentation with om santi 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 the advantage and disadvantage of the use of commercial textbooks in teaching. Among the principal advantages are the following. They provide structure and a syllabus for a program. Without textbooks, a program may have no central core and learners may not receive a syllabus that has been systemically planned and developed. They help standardize instruction. The use of a textbook in program can ensure that the student in different classes receive similar content and therefore can be tested in the same way. Maintain quality. If a well-developed textbook is used, students are exposed to material that have been tried and tested that are based on sound learning principles and that are paid appropriately. They provide a variety of learning resources. Textbooks are often accompanied by workbooks, CDs, and cassettes, videos, CD rooms, and comprehensive teaching guides, providing a rich and varied resort for teachers and learners. They are efficient. They save the teacher's time enabling teachers to devote time to teaching rather than material production. They can provide effective language models and input. Textbooks can provide support for teachers whose first language is not English and who may not be able to generate accurate language input on their own. They can train teachers. If teachers have limited teaching experience, a textbook together with the teacher manual, can serve as a medium of initial teacher training. They are visually appealing. Commercial textbooks usually have high standard of design and production, and hence are appealing to learners and teachers. And then, for the negative effect of commercial books such as the following, they may contain inauthentic language. Textbooks sometimes present inauthentic language since text, dialogues, and other aspects of content tend to be specially written to incorporate teaching points and are often not representative of real language use. They may distort content. Textbooks often present an idealized view of the world or fail to represent real issues. In order to make textbooks acceptable in many different contexts, controversial topics are avoided and instead an idealized white middle class view of the world is portrayed as the norm. They may reflect student needs. Since textbooks are often written for global markets, they often do not reflect the interests and needs of the student and hence may require adapt. They can de skill teacher if teacher use textbook as the primary source of the, their teaching, allowing the textbook and teacher manual to make the major instructional decision for them. The teacher role can become reduced of, uh, to that 
of technician was primary function is to present material prepared by others. They are expensive. Commercial textbooks represent a financial burden for students in many parts of the world. Okay, the next slide will be shown by my friend. Thank you. Principle for the design effective teaching materials. One, language is functional and must be contextualized. Two, language development requires learners engagement in purposeful use of language. Three, the language use should be, real be realistic and authentic. Four, classroom material will usually seek to include an audio audiovisual component. Five, learners need to develop the ability to deal with writing as well as spoken genres. Six, effective teaching materials foster learner autonomy. Seven, materials need to be flexible enough to allow for individual and contextual differences. Uh, eight, learning needs to engage learners both effectively and connectively.